In 1987, the Max Headroom broadcast signal intrusion invades the airwaves twice. I'm Jason Horton, and this is Strange Year. It's not easy to revisit any year in the 1980s without finding something strange. I'm not sure how strange it felt at the time, but looking back on that decade, it's filled with oddities. I'm a little under the weather, so perhaps the fever dream that is 1987 seems fitting this week. Prozac and The Simpsons debut, U2 and Whitney Houston make waves on the radio, the film Wall Street reminds us that greed is good. And in West Berlin, Ronald Reagan tells the world to tear down this wall. However, I'd like to get into the bizarre history that made 1987 a strange year. The Max Headroom Intrusion, November 1987. In Chicago television stations, someone using sophisticated equipment managed to briefly and illegally override broadcast signals on WGN-TV and WTTW. Even in a medium that is no stranger to bizarre moments, these were truly bizarre. Starting first on WGN-TV at 9.14 Sunday night during a sportscast. 12 quarters finally did... On November 22, 1987, two television stations in Chicago, Illinois, had their broadcast hijacked with a bizarre video which became known as the Max Headroom Broadcast Signal Intrusion. Max Headroom was a fictitious AI-like television host who had his own movie and TV series and was featured heavily on MTV. The first signal hijack took place on WGN-TV's 9 o'clock news. The screen went black and then showed a person wearing a Max Headroom mask and sunglasses. Swaying back and forth in front of a makeshift Max Headroom-like background, the broadcast lasted 28 seconds and ended after engineers at WGN switched the broadcast frequency. Later that night on WTTW, Doctor Who aired an episode called Horror at Fang Rock. Suddenly, the Doctor was replaced by Max Headroom. The character in the Max Headroom mask appeared and swayed back and forth while saying a number of barely audible words. That does it, the figure said, its voice distorted. He's a freaking nerd. After a moment, he paused to claim he had made a giant masterpiece for all the greatest world newspaper nerds, referencing WGN's acronym and corporate parent, the Chicago Tribune. He held up a glove, like the one popularized by Michael Jackson, and exclaimed, My brother is wearing the other one. He then pulled it on, saying, but it's dirty. It's like you got bloodstains on it. The camera then cut to a shot of a man's torso and partially exposed buttocks. The Max Headroom mask had been removed and was being held up to the camera. The rubber extension that had covered the figure's finger was stuffed inside the mouth of the mask. They're coming to get me, the man screamed. Bend over, bitch, a female voice responded. The man was then spanked repeatedly with a fly swatter as he screamed. The entire Max Headroom hack lasted 1 minute and 22 seconds before signal transmitters were able to black it out. They discovered at the time of the incident there were no engineers on duty at the WTTW transmitter tower. Had there been someone there, the signal could have been stopped. By the time they noticed the error, however, the 90 second transmission was over. Eventually, the FCC worked out how the hacker had done it. By placing his or her dish antenna between the transmitter tower, the hacker could have effectively interrupted the original signal. They wouldn't have even needed expensive equipment, just good timing and positioning. They were also able to pinpoint a location where the video might have been shot. Based on the background of the videos, agents from the FCC determined it was most likely the roll-down door of a warehouse and tracked it to a district that had warehouses with doors like it. The parties involved are not known, and the Max Hedrum broadcast signal intrusion remains a mystery. Here's the full audio of the WTTW broadcast.
I can tell a massive electric shock, he died instantly. The generator? Well, you're always so careful. I'd like to thank the Chicago Tribune, WTTW, All That's Interesting, and Reddit. If you can rate and review five stars wherever you're listening, I would greatly appreciate it. And if you'd like to message me, you can do so on Instagram at Strange Year Pod. Thank you so much, and I'll be back next week for another episode of Strange Year. <laughs>